Hi there, and welcome back to Dumpster PC's trip down memory lane look at the socket A. So we've talked about Thunderbird, Palomino and Thoroughbred, which brings us to Barton. February 2003 saw AMD release the Barton core. This core was still manufactured on a 130 nanometer process, but it featured 512k of level 2 cache. This bumped up the transistor count to 54.3 million in a die size of 101 millimeters squared. Shortly after its release, AMD transitioned its front side bus from 166 to 200 megahertz. This also gave AMD the opportunity to bump up the performance rating of their models. Barton was the last K7 core before AMD went to K8, the Athlon 64. After this though, Thornton was released, which was essentially Barton with half its level 2 cache disabled. And so it was effectively a thoroughbred B. Barton topped out at 2.33 GHz for the 3200 model when it was running on 166 MHz. There was also a 3200 model that ran on a 200 MHz frontside bus, but that only ran at 2.2 GHz. So this is an example of AMD increasing their PR rating, or their performance rating, for a model based upon its frontside bus. Now the Thoroughbred B and the Bartons were quite overclockable, and overclockers saw them run at 2.3 to 2.4 GHz with very little effort. There were also mobile versions of the Thoroughbred and the Barton cores and AMD called these the Athlon XPM. These were popular with overclockers because they had an unlocked multiplier and were essentially cherry-picked CPUs, being the best of the chips on the wafer because they had to run at the lowest voltage. There were also multi-processing versions of Thoroughbred and Barton, so there were Athlon MPs with those cores as well. Now, let's go and look at an Athlon XP with a Barton core. Over here, we have one. Now, we're not terribly in focus, but you can see that the core is quite rectangular. It's very, fairly narrow and quite long. It's longer than the Thoroughbred B core because of the extra level 2 cache, 512k of it. The markings on this CPU, which are here, if you could read them, they would be AXDA. 2600 DKV4D. Now, if we dissect this model number, this OPN code, if you like, the AXDA says this is an Athlon XP with the Barton core. The 2600 is the model number, and the 2600 here ran at 1.917 gigahertz. The D, the first D, that is, says that this is an OPGA CPU an organic pin grid array chip. The K signifies that it runs at 1.65 volts. The V shows that it has a maximum core temperature of 85 degrees. 4 lets us know that there's 512K of level 2 cache. And the final D says that this is a 166 megahertz frontside bus chip. On the second line that you'd have here, you have a stepping code and a date code. The stepping code of this CPU is AQYFA, and the date code is 0401. This shows that the CPU was manufactured in the first week of 2004. So you can see these four little rubber dots, one in each corner of the CPU. This was to try and prevent you from applying pressure that was unequal across the face of the core and cracking the core. So it would help to stabilize when you attached a heat sink on top of the CPU. To help with this, there were shims that you could buy. And these shims had cutouts for all of the passive components that you can see on the top of the CPU, as well as the core and the four protective foam dots. And these would provide even more protection for the core. So this is an Athlon XP 2600 with a Barton core. And it's got 462 pins, which you can see here. So, let's 
go back to our motherboard. This board is an Enforce 2, and this Enforce 2 had a built-in IGP. It had a GeForce 4MX chip on the north bridge, underneath this active heatsink. Because this was the integrated graphics board, it did not feature the highest performance or the most feature rich, that's probably a better way of saying it, Southbridge. It had an MCP Southbridge rather than the MCPT. And the T version had the Soundstorm chip or the Soundstorm audio built in. Now, as mentioned, this is an Enforce 2 chipset. The Enforce 2 had a dual channel memory controller. The interface to the CPU was only 64 bits wide, and the memory controller supported 128 bit wide, so two 64 bit memory channels. The second memory channel was essentially there to give the IGP the most performance possible, because with just the CPU running and no IGP running, it couldn't saturate both memory channels. So two memory channels ran here, but we've only got three DIMM slots. This meant that two DIMM slots shared one memory channel, and there was a second memory channel with just one DIMM slot. You could run a maximum of three gigabytes on these three DIMMs on this particular board. So the socket A ran all those cores that we described above in part A, the Thunderbird, the Palomino, the Thoroughbred, and in part B, the Barton. Even after AMD released the Athlon 64 in the socket 754 and 939 versions and the Athlon 64 FX in the socket 940, they still continued to produce socket A CPUs, but these were branded Sempron CPUs and they included the same cores that we saw above. The vast majority of them were thoroughbred B cores, or Thornton cores, that had 256K of level 2 cache. But the final few iterations of the Sempron had a full Barton core in there with 512K of level 2 cache. So that concludes our trip down memory lane look at the socket A. It lasted AMD a good number of years, but in the end it was pushed to its limits with the Athlon 3200 plus, which ran at 2.2 gigahertz on a f on a 400 megahertz effective frontside bus. Thanks, and we'll see you soon.